As structural engineers, we all love jumping into our favorite FEA software, seeing the stress plots and the deflected shapes, and seeing the colors change as the stress transfers through a structure. But what a lot of people get wrong is jumping into something a little bit more complex, when a little more simple would do. So when do we need to use a single degree of freedom system? When do we need to use a multi-degree of freedom system? And how to debug some of those errors? I'll be using this molar kit to explain these principles. My name is Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. So let's start with the single degree of freedom system. As you can see here, it's got a beam, it's got a column, it can move and deflect if we don't constrain it properly, it can lead to incorrect results. We need to make sure that we have enough constraint in the system such that it can stand up and not fall over. So it means sometimes in a single degree of freedom system, those outer plane forces will need to be ignored. As you can see, it fell over when I pushed it over. But if we applied a fixed base and did the same, we can see it transfers quite readily. What we can also do is potentially restrain it in the Z direction. So stopping it from moving this way, for example. So we're only really worried about how it transfers in the in-plane direction. So it means that what we're worried about is forces in this direction, not the other direction. Hence a single degree of freedom. We can only transfer it in the X and Y, but not the Z, which is this direction out of plane. As we're not really worried about the forces in that direction as they will potentially be braced by another structure or system in the building. So what do we need to look for? When can we break down these models? So any frame system should be able to be broken down in this way, especially if you've got bracing only in one direction for that frame system. What there will be is bracing in the other direction that will brace it in out of that direction. And because it's out of plane in the direction of the frame, the force won't be transmitted in that direction because it won't be stiff enough. Where the stiffer frames in the other direction will be stiffer, allowing you to transfer those forces. So in these type of systems, you're really looking at how the model moves. And most of the time, this is what you want to break down your models to. You want to break them down to a more simple system so that you can use them in a more complex way. When we jump up to a more complex system, when we're going to the multi-degree of freedom system, as you can see here, we have depth through our structure and width through our structure. So it means the structure can move both in the X and Z directions as we push it through this building. So let's just brace up the system a little bit more to make sure it behaves as we're expecting. And again, if you do want to pick up one of these molar kits, there's links in my below description. They're quite a good kit to show you and explain complex problems. So we can push the structure in one way, it can shake the other way. We can push the structure in the other way and it can shake in the other way depending on how the bracing units are. But as we can see, we can make it move in all directions at once as we shake it around. We haven't constrained it in that outer plane force. So it means that you do have more complex behavior and how the building actually moves and reacts. With these type of systems, you do need to watch out for a couple of things. What's really important is looking at your modal shapes to start off with. In a multi-degree of freedom system, you have more points of error. So this is why you start with your single degree of freedom system before you jump up to something more complex like this, because it means that you can check those outer plane forces and seeing is the forces in the correct way or have we missed a load path? Because the forces should be roughly of the same magnitude. What you can easily do is disconnect one of the points. That means the model will behave differently. There's a couple of ways that we can help verify this model as well. It's looking at the model shapes. In a multi-degraded freedom system, looking at those natural frequencies is really important. So what are they and how do they interact with the building? It's basically a natural frequency of the building that you're looking at here. You wanna make sure that the building moves in a certain way and the torsion mode is in your third place. So it's the least common of your natural frequencies. So you'll have direction in the strong direction, you'll have direction in the weak direction, and then into that torsion. So which way is the strong direction? It's the way that you have the most amount of bracing. So in this case, it should be this way if we brace the building out correctly. In the other case, it will be where we've got our smaller shear walls. So it will be in the shorter direction where you'll see your softest behavior. If we brace it out in a certain way, we can see that we can get odd behavior by not bracing the system correctly. So I'll just move a brace frame to the other side. So the frames have gone from one side to the middle and back again. Now, if we move it, we can see, look, Look what's happening, the whole structure is twisting and contorting in that direction. So as we shake it and see we've got a misbehavior. So it means that we're getting more of a torsion mode. As the structure moves, it's sort of twisting and converting that force because it needs to transfer the force from one side to the other. That torsion mode is not very great. So at the moment we do have somewhat of a sway frame on one side, but we have a brace frame on the other side. So we've got three brace frames and one sway frame. So in the X and Y direction, we can see that the building behavior is somewhat controlled because the framing system is the same. It rocks backwards and forwards. You can see it just rocks backwards and forwards. If we do it the other direction, we can do that. You see, there is no outer plane forces. If we do the other direction, watch what happens. So now I'm moving it left to right in the weak direction. You can see that the outer plane forces behavior 
as the system shakes backwards and forwards. That's the type of behavior that we want to try and avoid. We want to stop that either through having some additional bracing on three sides, where at the moment we've really got one strong side here and two weak sides. That misbalance of forces has caused that twisting action to occur. So there's a couple of ways we can potentially try and fix that. We can either by adding another brace frame. So we've got the brace frame on this side on the lower floor. Let's see what happens if we change that brace frame to be on the long direction. So this will be what we'll be typically adding the most amount of force for that transfer. We'll just fix it up as well as we go up. Typically you wouldn't be trying to brace these systems up on a live structure. You would have other places and bracing systems in place. So therefore we'll also take off this lower level bracing system. And that's okay because the lower level has got one, two, three sides of bracing support. So will this actually fix the problem or make it worse? Because now we have an L-shaped bracing stiffness system in place. You can see it's probably better. It's still rocking around a bit, but you can see how it balances out. It's not nearly moving as much because that brace frame helps twist it back. But you can see there's still a little bit of torsion moment in there. So probably what you'd want to be doing is making sure that we have three sides of the same stiffness. So what we're gonna do is transfer a bracing frame here and a bracing frame here. Then we'll see which way is the strongest direction, which way is the weakest direction. So now if we look at the structure, we have a brace frame on the front, a brace frame on the back, and we have a brace frame across the middle. So now when we go in the wrong direction, you can see it's just sort of going back and forth. There's a little bit of twist, but that's easily taken out by these end frames. If we then go in the other direction, in this direction, you can see there is no more of that twisting effect. If we try and push it in one direction, you can see it's quite stiff in that direction. So what we want to see is the behavior where it just sort of shifts across and braces the system. And it's really working out which is the stiffest direction for all our transfer of forces. We want to see it going this way first, then the strong direction. So it doesn't really matter which way is your strong direction or weak direction in this system, because it's just a brace frame, right? So you can argue that the shorter direction is the stronger direction, but what you don't want to see is that torsion effect where the system rotates. But as you can see here, we're not really getting any of that rotation. It's all gone back in the X and the Y direction by fixing the stiffness system. So by building up the system with three size supports, you've really got a stiffer system. And if you do want to learn more about FEA, I've got a video here about the top tricks for FEA that everyone needs to know. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon member. Without the support of my YouTube and Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. As always, keep learning, and I hope to see you next week. Bye.